Auburn's rushing attack between Tank Bigsby and Jarquez Hunter is pretty good. But just how good is it? Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm. I'm, I'm freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Happy Ferg Friday to all of you who celebrate. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer joining us. You put up a piece earlier this week, Justin, about the the one one punch. We always talk about a one two punch uh, when when a team has two good running backs, but Auburn has two really good running backs. Yeah, this was a uh, and I can't take credit for that headline. That was something T.J. Finley said after the game. Yeah. Uh, he said, "I, I kind of feel like they're a one one punch because they're explosive in their own ways." It's really interesting. Tank Bigsby in week one of the college football season arguably had the best performance of any running back in the country. Uh, yes, it was against Mercer, but there were even worse teams that were <laughs> that were playing uh, FBS teams on on Saturday last week. But uh, by far the best in EPA. Uh, I think he had the best PFF grade. Uh, his no, uh, broke a ton of tackles. Uh, great performance from him. And then on top of that, Jarquez Hunter uh, scores three touchdowns on eight touches. Uh, and he is one of only four or five players, I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, to score three rushing touchdowns uh, in one week so far this season of college football, Anthony Richardson being another one, uh, mm-hmm. the, the the very talented Florida quarterback. So a rare company for both of those guys to be in. And, yes, it's Mercer. But um, we heard all offseason about Auburn want to take advantage of the fact that they have Tank Bigsby, that they have Jarquez Hunter. And in the first game, uh, almost two-thirds of their their snaps were, were uh, rushing attempts. Obviously, Robbie Ashford helps that out a good bit as well. But sure. um, I mean, they they committed to it, and and it really really paid off. I thought I thought both of those guys, I thought Tank and Jarquez, uh, looked fresh, looked uh, better than they did last season, late last season when Auburn's rushing attack went downhill. We'll see if they can keep it up against really good competition. They've got a good <laughs> defensive line coming coming into town next weekend with Penn State. Yeah. Um, but you know this this is going to be a really uh, it's going to be a really fun combo if they continue to be the focal point of this offense and they continue to show that they've taken a step forward this offseason. Yeah, I loved seeing Jarquez Hunter break out for the first touchdown of the year, then obviously got two more later in the day because throughout all of fall camp, it was tank and it was a lot of love and praise and hype around Damari Austin. Nothing against Damari right. Austin. You know, I think his time is certainly coming. And he's the but- clear number three. Yeah, for sure. And we saw him in there a little bit, but I just loved it for Quez because it's like, this is a guy that went through an off season procedure minor, but missed spring. There were some Mm -hmm. questions then early fall. He's out there with no knee brace on. It's like, okay, this guy's going to be okay. And then for him to deliver in the way that he did, I just think mentally, you know, when when people have those minor things and they see other guys kind of coming on campus and, and hitting the ground running, it's almost more of a mental battle than a physical one. Clearly he got over it. Yeah, he, he, he talked about it after the game on Saturday night, just how excited he was to get back on the field and yeah. just how 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 much better he felt uh, actually getting out there and doing it. Um, yeah, a couple of interesting things with Jarquez Center. One, I thought his touchdown run, his first one, um, you know, Tank ended up having the most impressive run of the day uh, on that one right after the lightning delay, but that run is really, really good. His vision on that one was incredible because yeah. he kept – that that touchdown was coming towards us in the press box, mm-hmm. and I was noticing when he got to the second level, I was like, "Oh, it looks like he's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a good run." And then the way he stopped and then just found the open space and kind of maneuvered his way in there was really cool. Number two, over half of uh, Jarquez Hunter's touches on Saturday came in the red zone. So Tank Bigsby is going to be the guy who's going to get the lion's share of the touches in this backfield for sure. But I think Jarquez, you know, especially if Tank busts a really good run or two. And you want to spell him? He kind of it kind of feels like an NFL running back. You know, you know everybody knows about those those fantasy running backs that can that can vulture touchdowns or when they're in the red zone they have that that really high efficiency. I, I think Jarquez is going to kind of have that role this year, and I wouldn't be surprised also if he busts out a big run. You know, between the twenties, but inside the twenties, 
I think he pr- provides a lot of value, especially if Bigsby needs a breather. You know, you, you yeah. need to pull him off to the side for something. It's it's a really good it's a really good punch. Jarquez Hunter would be um, a number one running back at a, at a good bit of places uh, in college football, but uh, his time is coming. And um, he's going to give a lot of value, just like he did early last season this year. They just got to keep it up. They just got to keep it up against really good competition. San Jose State this weekend is interesting. Uh, San Jose State, not a great team by any means. Should have lost to an FCS team last week against right. Portland State. But last season, one of the best run defenses in in the group of five. And then also did a pretty good job in week one uh, against Portland State's ground game. One of the only things they did pretty well in that game. So it will be a step up uh, there for him and obviously the Auburn offensive line. Yeah, yeah. Staying on the running backs just for a second, then I want to get your thoughts on quarterbacks, then San Jose State specifically. But it almost seems like having Jarquez Hunter there is going to allow Brian Harson and and Coach Kiesau to use Tank Bigsby more because Mm -hmm. they have they have guys behind him. And and then even, you know, I think Damari, um, Damari could be a be a key piece with, with that third spot there. And so I can't wait to see what the usage looks like for Tank because yeah, I think every Auburn fan wanted it to be higher than it was a year ago. And if this past Saturday was any indication on how they're going to use their running backs, Auburn should be in a pretty good spot as far as the ground attack goes. Yeah, I don't think you want to overload Tank Bigsby by any means, but you can keep him fresher and you keep him more efficient yeah. by being smart with when you use Jarquez Hunter and Tamari Austin as well. Sean Jackson, I think, could play a part in that as well um you know I, you saw tank get involved a little bit more in the passing game you you, you know he had the drop and um there's but uh, have him have him split out wide in those empty sets do some different things with him and in, in, in that capacity i think that's just another way to get him the ball in his hands without necessarily running him into a pile um and then uh you know you can use a guy like jarquez hunter to take some of that from you and you know that he's got big playability Right. Uh, and he's he's fairly efficient uh, in in the in the red zone uh, as a running back. He was last season, and uh, obviously game one, he definitely was with what he did uh, with the three touchdowns. So yeah, no, I think uh, it's a great it's a great combo to have. It's a really really good combo to have, and it, and it's and it strikes me a lot like you know some other position groups on the team where you have a star, but you know that star is not going to be here next year. So the so the touches you would get and the opportunities, the reps you get to the other guy is only going to make you better for the future. Um, but it can also help you out right now. So it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're going to miss tank at Auburn, but after that, you got Jarquez Hunter, Damari Austin, and then that Jeremiah Cobb guy. I mean, he is Jer- <laughs> Jeremiah like- Cobb. If you haven't seen his, his number so far this season oh uh, my at, gosh. at Catholic and Montgomery, it's uh yeah, he's, it's just like 200 yards and like four or five touchdowns a game, pretty much just automatic right now. Yeah, he, he's going to be incredible. Absolutely incredible. All right, I want to get Jay Ferg's thoughts on the quarterback battle and what that rotation may look like in tomorrow's game against San Jose State. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. It's the number one source for all of your pro and college betting needs and sports gambling info throughout this season. And obviously, with the NFL starting last night, Bet Online has you covered on professional football as well. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news and podcasts, including um, just games of pretty much every every uh, every college matchup this week. I believe I saw it bet online that Auburn is favored by 22 and a half against San Jose State. My gut is it's going to be more than that. So I, I would probably take Auburn if I was betting on that game. So be sure to check it out. Bet online. It's where the game starts. Justin Ferguson, before we get your thoughts on the quarterback battle and the potential quarterback rotation tomorrow, tell everybody where they can sign up for the Auburn Observer. Yeah, AuburnObserver.com. Ton of stuff there this week. Uh, we talked about the Jarquez Hunter and Tank Bigsby newsletter. Uh, film room this week was all about the quarterbacks. Um, you can check that out. Did every number and every play that I could kind of come up with yeah. uh, about the uh, about the two quarterbacks, which I think we'll talk about here shortly. Wrote about the defense as well. What are three areas where Auburn's defense can improve from week one against uh, Mercer and what that looks like for the San Jose State game? Did a preview podcast on Thursday with Painter um, about the San Jose State game, so I dive into that. Also talked some Auburn basketball as well towards the end, if you want Ooh, to know that. Yeah, nice. a little SEC schedule out now, so yeah. we talked about that. And then mailbag. It's brutal. Yeah, Ooh, that's going to be a fun run-in. Uh, football uh, uh, mailbag on Friday. Um, a lot of stuff uh, about, I think, some of the topics we're about to discuss right here. Perfect. 
Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. AuburnObserver.com, $6 a month or $60 a year. Sign up. Yep. yep. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. AuburnObserver.com. All right. What do you expect the rotation to look like against San Jose State? Do you think Finley starts and then they just send Robbie in, you know, a few times every drive? Or do you think uh, do you think it's going to be more of, okay, maybe Finley gets a drive, Robbie gets a drive, or does TJ stay in and then hopefully Aubrey gets up by three touchdowns quickly and then they put Robbie in? What, what do you think this could look like? I think this could look like what they did last week, just maybe with a little bit more Robbie Ashford. Um, yeah. I'm not expecting a 50-50 split. Uh, Brian Hartson said that on Wednesday. I'm also not expecting um, TJ Finley not to start. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's the thing. I know a lot of Auburn fans are really excited about Robbie Ashford, and they should be. He, I mean, he he, he looked really good in, in week Electric. one. Electric, yeah. yeah. Right. I want to point out two things here. Number one, uh, TJ Finley played a really good game outside of those two interceptions. Now, those two interceptions were big, and they're going to stand out to the coaching staff, and they – they affected the points on the board. I mean, it took away a potential touchdown for Auburn and then gave a touchdown essentially to Mercer. Right. Um, you got, got to tighten up on those things. And then secondly, you don't want to overreact to one game, right? Especially against an FCS team compared to what you all just learned in the off season when it comes to the quarterback situation. So if you're, if you're waiting for, for Ashford to become the guy might have to wait a little bit longer. Um, and, and I think that will have more data from this game. I think they'll have more data from the Penn State game. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think this is a week-to-week basis. And Brian Harson looks at his quarterbacks like he looks at his running backs, like his wide receivers, his linebackers. It's like, hey, if you're good enough to play, we're going to play. We're, you're going to play. We're going to play. you. There's going to be some sort of situation where we can get yeah. you in the game. I think Ashford, um, early on, you know, he, he took over pretty much in the second half and ran the full offense. But early on, if you didn't notice, running plays, just running plays. So, the full scope of the offense might not quite be there yet for him. So you, maybe you add on a little bit to that with a game plan this week. Maybe you let him throw a little earlier uh, this time around. But I would expect TJ Finley to be the starter. I would expect him to get more of the snaps than Robbie Ashford does. But mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise me at all if Robbie Ashford gets um, uh, you know, even more than he did last week. And maybe an opportunity. That's the one thing I'm looking for. More of an opportunity to run the full scope of the offense. Because the interesting thing there was um, when they put Robbie in the game, uh, in the first half uh, with TJ. Um, it did not affect the flow of the offense at all, right? Communication wasn't bad. Nobody's, I wrote about this in the film room. The three drives where TJ Finley was the only quarterback and they didn't use Robbie, they punted and had two interceptions. The, mm. three, the three times where Robbie was the quarterback, two touchdowns, and then that weird thing at the end where it was a turnover on downs. Um, but there was there were a couple of drives, a couple of opportunities, right? Remember, remember – Robbie's big run, two plays later, TJ comes back in, rips the ball downfield to, to Javarius Johnson. Right. There were plays where Javarius, I mean, where, where TJ made a great throw. They would throw Robbie in there, came right back in. So, like, as long as those guys are working together well and it's not affecting the flow of the offense, they're going to keep trying this. And we talked about it last week. You know, Brian Harson has experience with this. I, I'm there with you. I, I, think, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see – who gets most of the most of the reps in practice going into Penn State, and we won't know that. One hundred percent. But if it's um if if what happens against San Jose State is close to what happened against Mercer, is there is there a decent chance that Robbie could be the starter against Penn State, or uh, do you think it's still TJ no matter what? I think it's still too early. I okay. think it's I think it's still too early, but it would have to be a situation where it looked clear coming off of this week that it was like, hey, Robbie's your best bet right now. And TJ, you can use still use I just think TJ's got more experience. He's kind of more of the since he is more of the passer, he's more of the guy you want to start with and let Robbie play off of that. Mm-hmm. Um I think they're gonna use really these first five home games. Maybe not maybe not completely. Maybe they'll have a quote unquote decision by then. I think they're going to use this this stretch there to start the season to get as much information as they can and then figure out what's the best plan. But I also think it's going to be tailored to a game plan. If you play against a team where the zone read could hurt hurt them more, I think you will see more Robbie Ashford. Yeah. If you play a team that has an awesome run defense and you feel a little bit better about maybe your quick passing game or you know stuff like that, maybe you'll see TJ more. Um, but you know, I, I think I think Robbie. I think both these guys have an opportunity to continue to show why they are the guy or why they should be getting more reps than they have right now. 
Um, I would just expect maybe seeing a little bit more Robbie this week, just just because of what we saw last week against Mercer. So I know you've probably spent, I know I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and you're more of the X's and O's guys than me. So I'm sure you spent a ton of time thinking about it. So the the play where TJ was at quarterback and Robbie was a wide receiver, and then they did the 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 sweet triple motion. option. Yep. Yeah. What do you, what else could they run off of that? They could. So the beginning of that play uh, is a regular kind of almost like a kind of almost like a veer option where um you know the quarterback takes a snap. TJ in this case has the inside read. Right. Um, so you could do that. Um, you could hand it off and then flip it to the flip it to the running back, and then the running back does something. Um, you could hand it off and then do a throwback screen to the. Uh, you could split off the other side. You could throw it back to the quarterback on the other end. Um, you could hand it off and then just run a regular pass, like do the sweep, and then the quarterback turns it and makes the throw. There's so many things you could do off of that play. Um, you could have the running back kind of. Like okay, here's the sweep. Running back's gonna running back's gonna wait for the option. Nope, here wheel. Just run a little quick wheel. Just mm-hmm. toss it over the toss it over to the guy's head, and and try to get downfield that way. There's a lot they can run off of that. It's a formation that Brian Harson said has been around for a while. TJ Finley talked about it being uh, something that they looked at from the RG three uh, Baylor teams. Um, they'll keep doing stuff like that, I think, because. I think there's some people who who were saying this weekend, like, why do you run that against Mercer? It's like, why don't you run that against Mercer? Everybody else is going to have to think about it now. Like, yeah. Penn, if they run it again this week, Penn State's going to have to be really ready for it. Oh, they're going to have to devote it. hours into just like, what what are they going to do off of this? Like, right? You can, <laughs> tweak, you can tweak and tweak and tweak off of that off of that set, and it's just a it's a fun little set. There's just there are some really creative play calls I thought in that game for for what was a mostly vanilla game plan. Um, there were some creative play calls. There was the there was that that backside quarterback power that Robbie ran. They mm-hmm. only went for four, but if they get a block, it's a touchdown right. on the edge. Like, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can kind of create. And this is this kind of goes into what I said earlier this offseason. Is like this is this is Brian Harson's team, and this is like his offense. This is Boise State, right? This is this is what you thought about. I, I've, I've told it on our podcast a lot. Go fire up NCAA 14 if you have it and play with the Boise State playbook and just go through it. And just that's the innovation, the creativity, because that you had to do that to survive against the big boys at Boise State. And I think Auburn, to a degree, is going to have to do some of that to survive against the Alabamas and the Georgias and to try to beat them as you try to continue to build up your recruiting to a point where you feel a whole lot more comfortable against them. I just, I I love seeing the off. I mean, it seemed like every play. There's either a motion across the field or, you know, a play action or, you know, they would roll somebody out. I mean, just if you're a college defender, you're having to make so many extra little decisions. Mm -hmm. And just over time, I mean, you're going to make a wrong decision every now and then. Then you just got to capitalize on it. I I just I, I just thought it was really, really refreshing to see. I'll give you another fun one. So a lot of what Auburn does, um, in the inside zone is a split zone. Uh, mm-hmm. Where they, where the tight end comes across the formation after the snap and and kind of seals seals the edge there. Um, they ran a couple of plays. They did one where there was a split zone, but they also had a jet motion from Shedder Jackson, and Shedder Jackson would come in and, and be an extra lead blocker for that when they when they tried to bounce to the outside. That play worked, and then when they went back to that set with Robbie in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Tight end comes over, shed comes over, everybody gets sucked down by the run, by, by the run, and that's the play where Javarius Johnson takes the top off the defense and Robbie hits it downfield. Wow! Using using Shed Jackson as kind of a decoy, you want your best receiver, uh, your your most experienced receiver as a decoy. So if he's not running out for a route, everybody's thinking run, run, run. They only had two guys going out in that pattern, but two guys ended up beating four because. The safeties were brought down, and it's like Javarius Johnson is going to beat a lot of people in the foot race. That's cute. I, I didn't notice that. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. Justin Ferguson, our guest. Let's get his thoughts, and I'll share some of mine. What specifically are we watching for for Auburn versus San Jose State? Today's show is brought to you by our great friends at Frisky Whiskey. Look, if you're listening to this on Friday, you need to make sure that your game day watching experience or your tailgate setup is ready to go. 
Head over to Frisky Whiskey. If you're you know around the Atlanta area driving into Auburn for the home game this weekend, make sure you stop at Frisky Whiskey. It's like the, the last exit before you come into Alabama. Be sure to check that out or just type it into your GPS. Or if you're in the Auburn, Opelika, Lee County area, the money you're going to save is worth the 15-minute drive over to Frisky Whiskey. It's just off of I-85. It takes two seconds um, once you get off the interstate. Super, super easy. And once you step in there, a ridiculous amount of selection, and you'll be blown away by the prices that you will save at Frisky Whiskey. Thank you to our friends at Frisky Whiskey for partnering with Locked On Auburn. Justin Ferguson, I got you for a few more minutes. I really appreciate your time as always. Mm -hmm. A few things I'm looking for outside of the quarterback rotation. Uh, the first thing I think is the wide receiver rotation. We saw Javaris Johnson hop Tarvaris Dawson in the depth chart. I think that'll be interesting. I got a feeling Coy Moore will get more reps over Malcolm Johnson Jr. this week. Any other receivers you're kind of thinking, okay, you know, maybe we see more of this guy um, on Saturday. They played a lot of guys, just a lot of guys didn't get a lot of targets because right. they didn't throw the ball much. Uh, maybe if you do that a little bit more. I mean, you saw Zayvon Capers isn't even too deep. He was out there in the second quarter. You know, Jay Fair was out there. Um, you know, uh, Marty Kelly was out there. So they're rotating a good bit. Uh, Javarius moving up to that top spot makes sense just because of the monster game that he had and he's had yeah. a really good little run here recently if you go back to the end of last season mm -hmm. um but yeah that wide receiver room is just the the rotation there the offensive line that's going to be a step up in 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 uh in competition i think um yeah. maybe not as much everywhere else but that defensive front for san jose state has played really well the last couple of years uh at stopping the run and then the one thing that um auburn was talking about earlier this week, Brian Harson was, is they got to get some sacks. They got to Mercer's quarterback a lot. I think Auburn had, it was like top seven or eight in the country and like pressures in week one. Yeah. They only got one official sack. They should have had two, but you know, I'm not going to argue with the scorekeeper there, but um, <laughs> they got to get more sacks and they got to actually like drag this guy down. Chevon Cordero is the, the starting quarterback for San Jose state. He comes from Hawaii. Guy he that can Brian, move. Yeah. He can move. Brian Harson's very familiar with him. Week one against Portland State, San Jose State gave up seven sacks. Seven yes. against an FCS team. So if you have Derek Call and Colby Wooden and Eku Leota, you should be able to take advantage of this. Um, I would I would imagine Hawaii, Hawaii, San Jose State's going to try to get the ball out of his hands quicker, just knowing sure. what they're about to come up against. Uh, but take advantage of that, get some sacks. And uh, in the secondary, tighten up there. You gave up some third and longs especially when you start rotating some younger guys, newer guys back there, tighten up on the third and longs, get off the field. Um, they have uh, San Jose state has a, as a six, four wide receiver uh, who transferred from Nevada, um, mm -hmm. who was, didn't have a great year last year, but a couple of years ago was one of the best receivers in the mountain West. And he's six, four had a, had a good game a week one against Portland state. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to mind that dude, especially in scramble situations. Right. Yeah. And then like they're running back Kaiser Robinson, I wasn't too impressed with him. I mean, against Portland their, State. Their offensive line, like, I watched that game, it, it, the second half of that game. That, their offensive line got eaten alive by Portland State. And yeah. so, I mean, it was hard for them to run. If they were moving the ball, um, it was Cordero throwing it up uh, to, to that wide receiver. Um, mm -hmm. And then there was, like, you know, uh, that final drive. Portland State gave up a lot of penalty yards uh, in, in that one. But, yeah, Cordero is a, a very – they have an exper a very experienced one one two punch with the, your quarterback and your wide receiver. Um, that offensive line, though, man, like if you get if you get beaten up that badly in week one against an FCS team, uh, and you're going up against what I would think is Auburn's strength of its of its defense, right. Um, right. could be could be rough. Could could be rough. Justin Ferguson, thank you so much for your time. One more, once uh, again, tell people how they can subscribe to everything you got going on at the Auburn Observer. Yeah, AuburnObserver.com. It's $6 a month or $60 a year to subscribe. Everything we do gets emailed to your inbox, so every newsletter I do and every podcast we do as well. Uh, and you can listen to our recap podcast for free on Sunday uh, from the San Jose State game. Yeah, be sure to check out AuburnObserver.com. You can read all of my written work at AuburnDaily.com, and we will be back Sunday morning. Daryl Dapperts will join me for a little morning after to recap everything that happened over the game. We'll see you then right here on Locked on Auburn.